Hi guys, I'm back with another tutorial and this time what we're going to do is start creating some woolly text. First we're going to create the splines, we're going to write our text, we're going to use a sweep nerbs to bulk it out, we're going to play with the sweep nerbs to kind of round off our text, make it a bit more bubbly, make it look like a, a woolly cushion and then we're going to texture it and add hair to the end to create that those little fibers. So first of all, let's come into our front view. Similar to my um, shoelace uh, tutorial, we're gonna start creating our text with our spline and cubic. This time it's gonna be single letters at a time. We're not gonna um, join it up if you saw the other tutorial. So our first letter, I'm gonna create a simple W. And what we're looking for is we want our uh, letters to to flow nicely. We don't want any sharp edges. So this here is is going to be probably a bit too sharp. So when when we add our uh, sweep nerves, we don't want a huge amount of overlap. So we're going to kind of spread that out slightly. Yep, see that's looking nice. So we'll do a letter at a time. So from here, we're gonna add our sweep nerves and we're also gonna add a circle spline. Um, we're gonna reduce that in size and we're gonna put them both in the sweep. There we go. So if we come back to our 3D view, now that's obviously way too thick. Um, so we're gonna come in and Reduce the size slightly. Remember, so this is going to be kind of a, a stuffed animal, as it were. So we want it to look fairly um, bulky. And what we're going to do is kind of move the spline around so it, it we create bulges as it comes down the top of this W. It's going to kind of bulge out and then in again. Same on this side. And to do that, what we're going to do is come onto our sweep nerves and under object we can come to details and then we're going to open up this uh, graph and to make things easier we're going to show in separate window let's dock that rearrange the view slightly so what we're going to do is using this graph now we're going to as you can see this will play around with the scale and we're going to use this to kind of bulge it out in certain areas where we want it now if we start off like that you can see that that's just a straight line we want it a lot more curved and this is because of the interpolation of the spline so if we come to, to our spline and change it from adaptive to uniform and then increase the numbers you can actually see uh, it's straight, it's, it's kind of a lot more curved now. If we play with it, go down, it becomes, so you can see it's becoming more rounder. So if we increase that to roughly, let's say 50, it should give us a nice rounded sweep nerves. So from there, come back to our sweep nerves, and now we can start playing around and trying to get this bulge. So if we, we know our first spline corresponds to if you just kind of wiggle it around you can see it corresponds to this top of the spline so the left of the W and we want it to be constricted at the top and then kind of bulging out and then we're going to kind of constrict it slightly at this kind of crevice here and it's going to come down to about there so first of all we need to know where this point uh, in a, is on our graph so we're going to so if actually on this graph, if you use uh, hold down one, you can move around your graph. Two, you can zoom in and out using the mouse. Um, and it, if you kind of zoom into where you need it, you can actually make this graph uh, a hell of a lot easier to use. So if we hold command and left click on our, uh, our, our line, we'll create another um, 
vertices and with this we're going to just pull the handles in and we're going to pull it right down so we've made the actual uh, size of it the scale of it is pretty much zero and we can now see exactly where that uh, vertices corresponds onto the spline so what we're going to do is move that round slightly to roughly where we want it so it's just uh, between three and four three oh there you go three point six five a uh, point three six five sorry so if we now increase this and we're going to then use our handles we need to untick this make sure this keep visual angle and that'll allow us to uh, use these handles separately so we're going to put it straight up we'll play with that one in a sec and we need to kind of play with it to see how restrictive we want it so this is going to be very much um, down to your you know how you how you want your text so this is going to be like a personal preference so if we increase the handle move that up you can see the actual the bulge is getting bigger we have it we don't want it too much but we want a, a noticeable bulge yeah I like that so from there we now need to move on to to this the, the center part of the W it's not going to matter too much you're not going to see a huge amount because of the the kink in it already but we, we're still going to play around with it so first off we need to find out where this crevice is so we're going to create another uh, vertices pull the handles in pull it down line it up slightly and then bring it back up and then make sure it's unticked Oop. zoom in a bit and pull the handles up and then around with it a bit more there we go and this final one what we can do this dotted line is actually marks the the lowest vertices so although we can't see our vertices over here we know it's the lowest vertices in our graph and therefore it must be that line so we're just going to bring it down to that line there we go just again just kind of feel our way around so we can see a nice bulge in the W yeah that's looking good now what we need to do now is we can see that our top of the W is very flat huh? so we're going to round this corner off here and again we're going to use this graph to do it so we know that this far left vertices refers to the first vertices in our spline right on that edge so what we're going to do is in the sweep nerves come to caps and we're going to fill it our caps we're going to increase the steps to about 10 and increase the radius let's say about 15 80 and click constrain so this will give us a more of a corner but as you can see it's it kind of you got two steps there so what we need to do is 
in this graph we need to kind of lessen the actual angle at which the first and the last vertices goes to kind of match this up slightly it's not going to be it has to be it doesn't have to be perfect because once we texture it, it it will hide it a lot but if we kind of move this right slowly you can see that this bump this step here is lessening so something like that so we're just gonna feather this in see that looks all right you still see that line but like I say once we texture it it's a bit too it's bulging at the bottom there we need to come in a bit more There we go. I think that should be right. And we'll do the same with this end. So if we actually copy that, paste it to that. So if on this one our handle is 0 0.072 and 0 0.192. So if we just reverse them on this one, so we've got minus 0 0.072 and 192, 0 0.172 and 192, they should be the exact opposite of each other. Increase that slightly. And since these uh, the each cap is the same, they should be roughly the same. Ah, that's looking good. So, with that now, uh, with the shape now as we want it, what we're going to do is let's get rid of this for a sec. We're just going to bring this above the grid. Um, we'll just center our axes oh actually yep. there and pull it up So, first of all, we're just going to texture this to see how it looks. We're not going to put the hair on yet. We'll do that all at the end. So, what I did was I found like a, a very uh, plain wool texture, a white one. And then in Photoshop, um, I colored it. So, I've, I've got like five different colors for all the different letters. And then just um, add each separate one to the letters using the same texture. So, if, uh, if I just add my texture turn off specular and I'm not going to worry about bump for now let's, let's put that on and see what it's like uh, you can see already that's looking quite good so if you just do about 100 make it a bit shorter so they're tighter um, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna leave there and then now I'm gonna add a start with my second letter so if so on my second letter I'm gonna come over and just quickly add oh, select cubic So make a quick uh, outline and then we're just going to kind of move each point to make it look slightly better. Just 
clean it up. So for as I know, we just made a simple loop. The easiest way to create our kind of uh, bulges with this is obviously we start off with our, our graph. Now because uh, I wanted my kind of the bulge to start on the corners there, there, there and there, um, the start of the graph will start there. So what I'm going to do to make things easier for me in a couple of minutes is I'm just going to right click and create point and I'm just going to create a point there. If we let's do that again. Roughly halfway between the two. So once we've done that, we create our, our midpoint. You only have to do it for the one of the corners. We're going to right click it, oh, right click, and um, set first point. So we now know that graph um, will start there. So we know on the far left we can pull it up and down, and it will act on that corner there. So with that done, let's create another sweep, nerves. Pull that up. Um, let's take the circle from here and put it in there and then what we're going to do obviously the actual size is different so we're going to just use our size tool uh, there we go let's reduce that slightly Um, yep, yeah. that's good. So again, uh, so exactly the same as the W. Let's make the spline uh, uniform, like that, up to about 50. Come into our sweeps. Um, we don't need, to, obviously there's no ends on this, so we don't need the, the caps to change, um, but we still need to come into object and Let's make that separate with no. And if we, there you go, you can see now that that actually acts on our point that we created rather than coming around more. So we're going to, let's make that 0 0.8. Uh, so we know that this one. We have it 0 0.8 as well. That's now created a a little joint. Filter these out slightly. Let's, um, I'm not liking that very much, so come in our spline and let's increase that a bit more. 
820 and you can see it's definitely a lot smoother now that's better so we've now got this definite bulk coming up and we're going to create that uh, seam on all of these corners so again we'll create our second point there we go bring it right down and roughly there so 0.235 we know that's going to be 0.8 because we want to keep it um, standard on all of these corners and we're gonna so again untick that and you can get this bulge so again you'll create this point pull this up I think I mean we could use the numbers copy the numbers from one to one on each and make sure that it was perfect but the fact that this is wall this is going to be obviously handmade I, I think it adds to the um, the look of it if you know things can be slightly wrong can be slightly uh, offset or you know one could be slightly I think this side is actually a bit bigger than this side or maybe vice versa and I think those slight differences will come out in your picture and make it look more uh, lifelike so if we bring that down to 0 0.8 do is actually if we lock this Y for each of them we can't move this up and down now so as much as I try it's set at the right number so we pull these round So you can see this is a bit, a bit bigger there. It's um, this looks slightly deformed, and this could be because of our actual spline itself. So if we pull it out, and if we move this around slightly. So again, it's worth working on your spine, taking time to do this to make sure that everything is kind of as you want it because um, as we add the hair later on, you'll find you can't, uh, we'll, we need to make these editable and therefore you can't work on it as well. So there we go, there's uh, our O, and with this one we're just going to copy and paste it again, just name these. Pull that over, 
and we'll create our final letter just a quick L so it's flying it let's copy a circle over and then what we're going to do because this is a a quick straight line we're gonna just play around with the vertices just to get it the right size Oop. there you go and like our W, we're gonna quickly add some caps. We need to make the the ends rounded. And ten. I think I add eighteen. Again, uh, constrained. Each layer is gonna be different depending on what you create, and you really need to be kind of flexible for each letter and just play around and see which one fits best especially to your style how you want it now you might want it like a flat edge you might want it to come around and have like a, a dome shape like that um, the best thing is just play around with each letter see which one looks better for your uh, style and just go with it just play around find out um, if you want the, the splines moved or play around with the the graph I, I mean that's pretty much the the best advice I can give you for anything just play around just spend some time on it so rename that we're gonna come into our uh, graph for the last time we're only gonna need one um, uh, split up uh, vertices for this on the graph we're going to have this and we can make it actually with this L we can like really bulge it out I think so if we come to 0 0.8 on both of these and then roughly 0 0.5 yeah Again, it's it's straight. I forgot to come in and change that to uniform. There you go. Let's try that. There we go. Again, we want it to kind of blend into this the top fillet cap and then we'll do this one as well looking oh L shape not too happy about that So you've got your text and what we're going to do is just move these in slightly to each other to nudge them up together so they're kind of cosy. Even a bit of overlap will be fine. There you go, just so they're, they're close up. 
There we go. Now I'm just going to put those in a null uh, text. And what I'm going to do is create the other three 